Well, the responsibility for what happened, i.e. the near miss of crowd disaster, lies with the hordes of thugs that decided to use football and our great final to essentially behave in ways that were criminal, that uh, recklessly endangered life. I mean, they made those choices. No matter how many police you might have had out that day, you would have still come up against some difficulty dealing with that. Um, no matter how strong the fencing was at Wembley, um, you still would have come up with problems. But we'll never know, will we? Because actually on that Sunday, it did happen in all of the elements of that perfect storm. And we did have scenes of reckless disorder. I'm using that word deliberately because they did recklessly endanger their own lives and others when they tried to breach the stadium, which in normal languages, they attempted to break in and break in and break in until they gained entry. So I think the things that you would want is first of all in, in the planning process, to sound boring for a minute but it's important, in the planning process at some point essentially you would have an independent checkpoint that came in a week before, two weeks before, whatever, the day before and just does a kind of OK, have we put all of this together properly? And they would be a safety expert, a safety expert. I think the second thing is that if it was an, a game of national significance, it would be a message to all of the partners, the police, the local authority, um, the stadium, wherever it is, to actually make sure that they are putting public safety above and beyond all other issues. Um, and so that's a technique that we use in other areas of work, and I see no reason why you couldn't apply it to football. So I think that is the, the crucial question that we had to ask myself, I had to ask myself was, when I say near miss, what do I mean? And one of the, the moments that I think is actually the saddest is that a lot of people responsible for public safety on that night, the police and the stadium, wanted England to lose so that the horde of 6,000 would turn around and walk away, which is what they did. The rain came down, they turned around and they went home. The alternative scenario might have been that as they opened the gates to let people out, which they have to do, you would have had 67,000 people trying to leave with 6,000 people trying to gain entry. That would not have ended well, to put it mildly. So we had the breaches early on. Um, at the beginning when the doors first opened, when the national anthem was played, when the goal went in, we saw mass breaches with people pulling safety doors and then at the end we could have had uh, an unmitigated disaster where we're certainly looking at um, potentially fatalities and life-threatening, life-changing injuries. So I, I, this, is, this came up in the media quite a lot after the event. If this country cannot hold a football match, a sports game, at eight o'clock at night on a Sunday, we don't deserve to run anything. And, and we have to ask ourselves if the fans that created that disorder on that night, if they think that was somehow helping with a World Cup bid or with the reputation of English football or celebrating the, the men that you know came second in the Euro tournament, i.e. our wonderful English football team, they have to hang their heads in shame. They created that disorder. They recklessly endangered people's lives and they did for the reputation of England. And all I can say is I've got absolute determination, I think, that people will learn the lessons of this because it was so close. And that means that hopefully people will see that we are capable of doing it. But the eight o'clock kickoff time, it's shameful if we can't have a football match at eight o'clock at night. No reason why we shouldn't. So I think, I think the issue is that, that what's called Zone X essentially is between, in Wembley it's straightforward, it's between the tube station down there and the Wembley steps behind us. And that's called Zone X and it's, the, it's, it's really where all the problems started on that day. And I do not think, and I found this in my report, that it is clear enough who is accountable for public safety in that space. And I think that's why one of my recommendations is to the Sports Safety Ground uh, organisation to basically look again at Zone X, revise it and work out who's accountable for it. Because I think that was one of the big issues on the day. Baroness Louise Casey. First of all, a day that should have been a celebrant. On the steps behind us right now, and they spent six hours sick of chosen references of people who decided to try and break into the stadium. And they need to have that on their heads. That's the shape.